Hey everyone, welcome to the Flutter development series from Roman Just Codes, where I'll be developing beautiful user interfaces with Flutter. And in this video, I'll be developing the list page with custom list items for my Flutter app. In this series, I've been building the UI for a fictional grocery and produce app. And for this episode, I'll be covering using the list view widget with custom list view items, adding a custom bottom nav bar, as well as creating Dart models for mocking the data fed into our widgets for fast and more accurate prototyping. In previous episodes, we built the splash screen, the welcome page, and in this video, we'll cover the list page. Make sure to check those previous videos. As always, bring the assets that will be used for this page. I'll bring all remaining assets. Since these are just images, I'll drop them in the Assets Images folder. A good practice is to start defining what the data that will feed your widgets will look like up front. And for that, you create Dart model classes. Create a folder called Models. We'll start with a model that will represent a category for this app. This class will hold properties for name, the icon, a color, image name, and a list of subcategories of the same base type. Add a constructor with named arguments for each of the properties needed to hydrate this model. I'll take the opportunity to create a helper class called utils. I'll use this as some sort of mock data generator for now. I'll create a static method called getMockedCategories that will return a list of categories with the data I'll be expecting to come from a real RESTful API. I can later also use this for more comprehensive testing and mocking. For now, this is good enough to feed data into my widgets and avoid hard coding data in my widgets. The list of categories will be injected into the list page, and each individual category will generate a custom list view card with the category information. This makes it easy for me to visualize with some semi-realistic data what the ultimate outcome will be. With my mocked data prepared, I'm ready to use it on my category list page widget. Let's see. Start by creating a member variable that will hold the reference to my list of categories out of the utils method created. We'll need a drawer and an app bar for this scaffold widget, so add them now. Later, we'll deal with the app bar. Replace the dummy content in the body by a container widget, which will hold a column widget as its child. The column widget will have a text, which will be the top label that appears in my design. Let me temporarily add the category list page as the home page so when I do hot reload, it lands right on this page. I don't want to have to be navigating for every single minor change for now. Let's do a full reload and continue. Add text alignment, but since the column is not stretching yet, it has no effect. So add the cross axis alignment stretch to the column. Text is a bit tight, so wrap it inside a padding widget to give it some breathing room. Right below the text widget, I want the list to occupy the rest of the column real estate. So I'll start by creating an expanded widget and a list view as its child. A list view widget renders its children as a list. By default, it lays them out vertically and provides a scrolling mechanism. What did we just do? The list view uses the built-in builder method to render its children, and it does it based on the item count, provided by how many category items I have, and an item builder callback method that executes for as many items I have in my item count, providing the current context and the iteration index. Here, I'll return each category as a full-blown custom category card in a minute. Let's verify with a simple example whether the data is being fed correctly by creating a dummy text widget and displaying the name out of the category in the iteration. Nice, we have all our categories. Now, let's start shaping this up. Add a container widget as the root and add a margin all around. Add a predefined height so all my list items have a consistent height across. The child of this container will be a stack. 
I'm a big fan of stacks for their versatility and flexibility. First child of the stack will be an image, which I'll use as a background image. This is a corresponding image for each of the categories provided. Images show, but they aren't covering the whole area. Use a box fit cover strategy for the image to cover the available space provided to it. But this is not enough. For this strategy to actually take effect, you must wrap your image inside a positioned fill widget. This is what guarantees that a widget will fill the available area provided by the stack. We want rounded corners all around, so apply a clip R rect widget to the image widget. Add a proper border radius. Add another container on top of the image. We'll use this container for the grading effect. Add a predefined height and use a box decoration to add a linear gradient from bottom to top of the container ranging from an opaque black to transparent. Line it up to the bottom of the stack by wrapping it inside a positioned widget with bottom zero. Apply the same border radius as the image behind it using the border radius property of the box decoration. Now, for the icon and label in this list view card, add a row widget since they will be laid out horizontally. First children will be a container with an icon font widget inside, color white. Pass the icon provided by the category model, size 30. Back up on the container widget, apply the color also provided by the category model, which will serve as the background color for this icon. Apply some padding as well. And to match our design, let's make it into a circular shape by wrapping our container inside a clip oval. Add a text widget for the label to the right of the icon and feed the name coming from the category model. Add the proper styles. Let's do the size box trick here as well for some spacing effect between the icon and the label. We need to position it at the bottom of the stack, so wrap it inside a position widget with bottom zero, just like the gradient container. The row widget needs some breathing room, so wrap it inside a padding widget with some decent margin. Things are taking nice shape so far. I've noticed that in my design, I'll be using this icon with the background color in several places, so let's make this into a widget, and more reusable as well. We'll call this new widget Category Icon, and we'll pass into it the color and the icon name. Flutter emphasizes widgets as a unit of composition. Widgets are the building blocks of a Flutter app's user interface, and they form a hierarchy based on composition. Create the required properties and constructor for it. Paste the widget structure as the return of this widget's build method, then replace the corresponding properties that will bring this widget to life. Notice I'm using a default parameter value for the size. That way you don't have to explicitly define the category icon size all the time. Let's get back to the category list page widget and import our newly created widget. Everything should continue to work as before. Since we are in composition mode, let's extract the whole container widget that we are using for our list view custom cards and extract it as its own widget as well, with its own build method. Let's call it category card. This widget will take for now a single category, the category in the current iteration. Fix the imports and replace the required instances for the category member variable.
always look up for ways to break up your code into multiple widgets as it makes your widget tree a lot more organized and updates are centralized to the build methods of each individual widget. Create a corresponding constructor that will populate the category when this widget gets mounted on the widget tree. Reload and check. Still things are working flawlessly. I'm kind of liking this refactoring. Let's tackle now the app bar. We want to customize its look and feel and be less materialish and more our brand. As a title, instead of a text widget as people usually do, I'll make it my icon font widget, which gives it a stylish look and in line with our app's brand. Okay, let's get rid of that background by making it transparent. The app bar by default has an elevation. That's why you see the shadow there. Let's remove it. Wait, my hamburger menu is gone. No biggie, it's still there, just white. Change our app's icon theme to match our theme using the icon theme data color property. To add elements to the right-hand side of the app bar, leverage the Actions property, which holds an array of widgets. Let's add a container with an image, clipped as a circle using a clip oval widget. Add margin and padding accordingly. I'm pretty satisfied with the outcome so far. Now let's tackle the bottom nav bar. Let me show you how simple and quickly I can create a minimalist yet cool looking bottom bar. As you see, it should look as if it's above the list view. So we have two options, add it at the bottom of the column or use a stack. Since I'm in stacking mode, let's go with that. But adding it at the bottom of the column would work just as well. Add a stack widget as the parent, then the column widget, then using the position widget with bottom, left, and right of zero, add a container widget with your desired height. In my case, I'll make it 100 pixels. I need to add a shadow to this container so I can't use the color this way. The color needs to be inside the box decoration along with the other properties. Add a box decoration and add the color. And a box shadow with 20 blur radius and color black with some opacity and zero offset. Let's proceed and lay out the icons. For this, I'll use just a row of icons first to see what they will look like at the end. Leverage the material icons for all your icon needs as much as you can, but also you can use your own icon fonts. Let's spread them across the width of the screen by using the main axis alignment space around. Add bottom padding to lift them up a bit. Okay, now these icons are not actionable at the moment. Let's make them into button widgets. First, add the material widget as the root of this button widget, and let's leverage the materials icon button for the ability to take an icon widget and its clicking capabilities. It looks like a square. Let's clip it as a circle using a clip oval. Loving it. Let's replicate this approach across all other widgets. And there you go. This is a pretty good start to create a full-blown and custom bottom bar. As with the other widgets, let's extract the structure into its own widget and let's call it category bottom bar. No parameters at the moment, just a plain old bottom bar widget. Create a separate file for it, 
well, you know the drill. Fix all imports. Back in the category list page, import the newly created category bottom bar. And everything should again continue working as before, but now with a better structure and widget composition and clickable buttons on the bottom bar. Speaking of clickable, there's still something missing on our list view custom list item cards. We never made them interactive as far as being clickable. Right now, when you click, they don't go anywhere. How to make them clickable, yet encapsulated and not tightly coupled to the page where they're supposed to navigate to? Currently, the category card only exposes a property to be provided as input. But how about output? When the user clicks on them, we want them to navigate to the appropriate page. Well, the simplest approach would be to expose some sort of event. In our case, we'll call it on card click, that when we wire up a callback to it, the card will be sure to execute it from within. We capture a reference to a function via a member variable type function. Add it to the constructor so it can be injected from the outside. And how do we convert this container into something clickable? Wrap your container inside a gesture detector widget. This widget can be used as the foundation for widgets that can capture gestures from the user. Use the onTap event from this widget and then inside, trigger the function wired up to the on card click if provided. You can perhaps make this a required parameter. Back on the category list page widget, wire up a callback to it from where we will launch the selected category page, which we'll deal with it in the next video. For now, just like before, we'll create a placeholder widget for it. With the placeholder page widget in place, navigate to it using the navigator.push, passing the context and the material page route. Now everything is hooked up. Let me add the sample text inside a center widget so you guys can see it. One last thing, notice how when we scroll all the way up, the bottom bar covers the bottom piece and cuts it off because it is on top of it. Use the list views padding property to account for the height of the bottom bar in a little bit more and add bottom padding to it. Maybe a bit more. Nice, now I'm more than happy with the outcome. Let me revert the changes on the main dart so we can see the whole workflow coming together. Awesome. I'm glad you all stuck all the way through the end to see this come to fruition. Thanks again for watching. In the next video, we'll deal with other alternate layout strategies like the grid view, we'll bring more models and more mocking for faster and more accurate prototyping, and promote more reusability of components by creating our first stateful widget. See you on the next one. That's it for this video, so please stay tuned for more upcoming videos. Hit the subscribe button to stay updated, and please like this video if you found it useful. Thank you so much for watching.